Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review in the month of October. Why not review a childhood classic that came out 30 years ago, August 25th, 1989. It's a family black comedy and fantasy called Little Monsters. Not to be confused with the latest uh, movie by Hulu, which stars Lupita Nanyo and Josh Gag. I haven't seen that one, but that might be interesting too. That was a film about zombies. Now this is the one with Fred Savage uh, playing a boy who will be friends with a monster who's blue colored, a wild type of guy with horns, who's played by Howard Mandel. Yeah. Of course Fred Savage from the Wonder Years uh, joins in with his real life sibling, his brother uh, Ben Savage and their sister Carla yeah, and I know Ben Savage is from um, Boy Meets World. I also had Daniel Stern from Home Alone. Devin Rattray also from Home Alone. <laughs> uh, what a connection. <laughs> and of course Daniel Stern does the voice of adult Kevin Arnold on the show, so I love that, that connection that they throw into it. Uh, anyway, so, they discovered a secret world of monsters um, in the underworld. And they go around sneaking into children's bedrooms at night to pull pranks on them. You know, some crazy wild pranks. Yeah. <laughs> Something that, that's so bizarre that you wouldn't believe. Well, anyway, the movie was originally released by Best Run Pictures, the same company that gave us Dirty Dancing. But due to their uh, bankruptcy problems that they were having that year alone, the film had to be released by MGM and United Artists. So they took over for the theatrical and home video rights. But in overseas, or at this rate, even in North America, Lionsgate got the rights that they retained from Bestron. Um, they might still own the rights to today. Um, because I noticed that uh, they had put out a high definition print. Well, MGM had put out the DVD like back in 2004, or free, I believe. And um, that was only in full frame. I don't think there's even a Blu ray as far as I'm concerned, but if that's the case, yeah, this really needs one so badly. I'd be surprised if Shelf Factory picks it up, or maybe Kino Lober, but I guess that depends. I mean, um, but either way, I mean, that's a shame. Because I, I always thought this was a fun movie. I loved it as a kid. I remember watching this uh, when it's on TV. Uh, and I think we rented it on home video before. Um, it, it was fun. It's kind of like uh, Beetlejuice for kids. Think about that. Yeah. It's also like Monster Inc. too. I mean, in a whole different way. Yeah. Just more crazy. And strange and all that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to start. Stars once again Fred Savage from the Wonder Years, uh, Harvey Mandel, stand up comedian, went on to do films like uh, Blake Edwards, A Fine Mess, Walk Like a Man. Yeah, I remember that one. Also does some voice acting for shows like Bobby's World. You yeah, remember that show on Fox? Uh, even The Muppet Babies. He also went on to do the TV show Deal or No Deal, the game show that was on NBC, and also went on to, to become one of the, the panelists for the TV show Americans Got Talent, yeah, which is hosted by Nick Cannon. Yeah, yeah Ben Savage, uh, Fred Savage's brother, Daniel Stern from Home Alone, also from the Wonder Years, does the voice, once again, Adult Kevin and many others in this career, even City Slickers. Margaret Whitten, Frank Whaley, yes, Frank Whaley, went on to do uh, the film Career Opportunities and went on to do the film Pulp Fiction, you know, which is going to be celebrating its 25th anniversary. Yeah, and he's the one that got shot by Jules, played by Samuel Jackson, joining in with John Travolta as Vincent. 
How come Frank never gets his revenge against uh, Samuel Jackson in, in another movie? That's what I wonder. <laughs> ah, whatever. Rick Dukeman, stand-up comedian also, from the movie The Burbs. He went on to do uh, Groundhog's Day, as well as uh, Encino Man. Yeah. He's no longer with us, sadly. Yeah, but he was a fun guy. Amber Barreto, Devlin Rattray, also from Home Alone. <laughs> yes, who went on to play Buzz. Here he's, he's just as worse as Buzz. Well, yeah, because he's an ass. William Murray and Carla Savage. It's written by Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott. And it's directed by Richard Allen Greenberg. For those who don't know, he was a title designer for many blockbuster hits like Superman, Alien, The Matrix, Independence Day, among others. And he also had done visual effects for the movie Predator, which he was nominated for an Oscar for. Yeah. He's no longer with us. He passed away last year at the age of 71. But I think this might be his first uh, directorial debut. So I'm not so sure. But I don't know if he ever directed many films after this, but I think he mostly just does you know, visual effects and design. But I gotta say, he does a good job. The movie begins when we meet the Stevenson family, including Brian, who's played by Fred Savage. They just moved to a suburban Boston, but he felt very isolated in his new neighborhood, mostly because he misses his friends from another town. And it feels like, you know, their new home isn't exactly as pretty as they thought it would be. You know I mean, because they're having some issues and stuff. But one morning, Brian finds himself being blamed for several things that he didn't do, such as putting melted ice cream inside the cupboard of the kitchen, and it fell on, on his father, Glenn, who's just getting ready to work, played by Daniel Stern. Not to mention, uh, Brian's bike was in the driveway where Glenn actually ran over it. Yeah. So, he got into trouble. But Brian insists that he's innocent and quickly blames it on his younger brother, Eric, played by Ben Savage, who also has his best friend named Todd, who's played by William Murray. So, Eric actually claims that he saw a monster the night before that might be the one who's causing all the, the havoc. So as a revenge, uh, Brian tosses Eric's lunch outside the window, which landed on the local school bully, Ronnie Coleman, who's played by Devin Rattray. So he boarded on the bus, agonized Brian. Once they get to school, they had a fight together until the principal breaks it out, sends uh, Brian to his office to have a talk, since he's brand new to the school. Yeah, of course, same goes with Eric. So that night, while sleeping in Eric's room, just for a bet, to see if there actually is a monster living underneath the bed, Brian suddenly hears a noise, a loud noise, the source which quickly disappears under Eric's bed, unable to make it through the night through Eric's room, making his way downstairs couch for the remainder of the night. So the next morning, Eric and and Todd have found Brian sleeping in the couch. You know, they're actually working on it. Jokes about Brian being unable to sleep the entire night in Eric's room. So Brian's bet for Eric was double and nothing. So he decided to sleep in Eric's room the next night, but he had to sleep early, so he had to like <laughs> finish uh, eating dinner real fast to, to make sure that he had sets up several booby traps, almost like a Home Alone connection here, <laughs> to make sure that the monster appears. Yeah, just laying out some Doritos and and try to connect the, the bed to the doorknob to make sure. And once that happens, um, the monster appears and it turns out to be just when he wrestles with it, it turned out to be 
a horn like with with color blue skin and he's very wild I mean he looks like a punk rocker named Maurice um, who's uh, played by Pyra Mandel um, he was scared at first but then he started to figure out uh, that they both shared the same entrance and they became friends really quickly so over the course of several nights uh, Maurice showed him that in the underworld there's actually a monster world for many monsters including little monsters so they go around actually having the best time of their lives and having fun doing the way the kids do they have an arcade room with uh, lots of uh, pinball machines and all those other stuff um, they got like several other places here and there and you get to meet a lot of monsters hanging around in one of those stairways <laughs> It's like, wow, something you never thought you would imagine. And also to learn that they actually pull pranks uh, against uh, all the children uh, around the entire neighborhood. You know, they go around like, like for example, they put a peanut butter on the receiver. Uh, they actually put, <laughs> they actually go around doing a lot of uh, crazy shit that they put in. Uh, not, not to mention, um, yeah, and this is the big one, was when they pull a prank on Ronnie Coleman by actually uh, taking out some cat food and putting it inside his tuna fish sandwich and then actually taking a jar of apple juice and Maurice actually urinated it inside so, so that way, you know, they'll get even. <laughs> Which is really funny, too. <laughs> Of course, I mean, Maurice can do everything too. I mean, they had a lot of video games, junk food, and all this other stuff included that they have. And they had to go to all these staircases. And but then, um, even though, you know, things were going great for Brian and Maurice, I mean, he soon began to learn that he's, his whole life was starting to change. Because sooner or later, he's going to start shrinking and becoming a little monster himself. Of course, one night, uh, Maurice started to bring Brian along with several other monsters to the bedroom of an infant baby, which intends to scare the baby. Yeah, that's what they were trying to do with, with all the monsters joining in. But, but Brian thought to find it very cruel to do. So they attempt him to turn in on the lights to cause the monsters to collapse into closes. Yes, because this was actually their fear. You know, Brian actually did use some, using a lot of uh, light bulbs or any other lights around, like even flashlights, you know, just to scare them off and or even killing them, actually. So yes, bright lights and sunlight can really uh, can kill a monster, just like you know, vampires. So they collapse into their clothes. But anyway, he opens the bedroom door, exposing the hallway light to the baby bedroom, and doing this, uh, Brian does tend to turn into a monster as quickly as possible. And so he noticed that he is shrinking. So he escapes through the house, going through the front door. He found Todd's uh, backyard, which Todd was actually sleeping in a tree house, and he fell off sees Brian and then shines a flashlight on Brian to, to make sure what's going on and he begin to notice that his arm is shrinking. So. There's also some family problems going around too with uh, Glenn and their mother uh, Holly and was played by Margaret Wooden. They're about to have a trial separation. I mean apparently they thought it was a divorce that was happening but it turns out that the Glenn decided to move away from the city for a little while just, just to work things out. So they won't be able to see each other for maybe a month. Until things get settled, uh, he'll come back. So they'll be together again no matter what. Because for a while they weren't exactly getting along that much. You know, they had to go around working at the new house that they have that they moved in and you know, trying to get everything all ready, trying to make things uh, 
and it worked out. Then we learned that Eric is being kidnapped by another monster named Snick, who's played by Rick Dukeman. Um, which, by the way, Rick Dukeman played a a dual role. I mean, he actually played uh, a character on on TV. You know, who talks about babes. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a late night talk show. Wow. <laughs> Or Brian is like eating some peanut butter and onion sandwich. Eh. Yeah, I know. I don't like onions, but apparently he loves it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Snake actually kidnaps him through the couch bed in the living room. So now Brian has to find him. So he joins in with uh, Kirsten. Yeah, which Kirsten is um, a girl that he likes. They actually work on their own science projects, uh, which, sad to say, uh, Maurice actually destroyed uh, Kirsten's school paper. Yeah, by using a <laughs> a dog uh, of of his hand. Yeah, so he ate uh, her homework. That that was totally cruel too. Uh, but they get to know each other very well. I mean, he thought that uh, Kirsten hates him, but he didn't. So anyway. So they, they join in with Todd, to, you know, kind of dressed up like Ghostbusters, you know, going around bringing like tons of flashlight. Because Kirsten actually has a, a key to actually open inside the, the teacher's uh, closet. So they, that's where they hid all these uh, light bulbs and all this other stuff included. So that's really cool. So that's where they had to take uh, all these light bulbs and all these flashlights, just put it together you know, using all these batteries. So that way, they they need it so they can, you know, kill all these monsters around. We also meet uh, the guy who runs the entire uh, underworld, named Boy. Yes, simply Boy. He's played by Frank Whaley. Yes, Frank Whaley was quite different <laughs> in this movie. Yeah, but uh, he's the one that actually uh, joins him with uh, Snick, who who actually uh, kidnapped uh, Eric. I actually tied him up inside a a darting game, which, yeah, they started throwing darts at him. So what they did was they tried to kill both of them with the flashlight and try to find a way to rescue uh, Eric, which Eric was being hidden in one of those blocks. Already, you know, disfigured, yeah, both Snick and, and uh, Boy actually captures them and, and dumps them in, inside a world full of dowels, yeah. Tons of dolls. So now they're about to escape. Uh, Marie Sexy joins in uh, to help him out because uh, yes, he has the key and everything to, to let him out and try to save Eric and and stop these guys. Marie Sexy even had a frame floor to to kill uh, Snick and the uh, boy joining in, so that way they could be destroyed completely. I thought that was wow, awesome. But unfortunately, it was too late because um, by sunrise, um, they won't be able to get to their homes uh, where they belong. So they're actually stuck inside in the monster world. So Maurice decided to find a plan to actually escape uh, from the world. So they had to go all the way several miles because they actually have a, a time zone. Yeah, the Eastern Time Zone to Malibu, which is Los Angeles, um, which basically would have been Pacific Standard Time since they, since they're actually from Boston, Massachusetts. So of course, they'll take them a lot of time just to get there. So that way, they'll be able to escape during the morning before sunrise. So, so yeah, they finally escape, um, and Brian and Maurice. Uh, meet once one last time because you know they get to know each other they remember all the times they have but, but he was, he's definitely going to miss them forever Maurice actually gives uh, you know, Brian a gift which is the jacket so, so that way he'll be remembered by so once he finally escape um, he also joins in with Ronnie too yeah I forgot to mention um, so yes, they're now at uh, Malibu Beach. They make a phone call um, for their parents, and well, <laughs> it's a long story. So, 
Um, but it was a fun movie. I um, really enjoyed it. I mean, even 30 years later, I, I still thought it was fun. I mean, and very nice direction by Richard Allen Greenberg. I mean, I think he did a, an impressive job, you know, capturing the spirit of of the the monster world and everything else that went into it. I mean, I thought it looks really uh, spectacular the way they they did all this. I mean, it does give it a dark, eerie, bizarre feel to it. It's definitely what you expect from a family comedy, I mean, with monsters hanging around. I mean, they do a lot of bizarre and strange uh, things going around. <laughs> and I thought Fred Savage was great in this movie. Yeah, he was excellent. And so was Ben, his brother, and um, everyone else, too. Um, Harman Dell was, was totally wacky in this movie, too. I mean, he does all these uh, funny dialogue and all this stuff. And, like, he, a lot of uh, crazy shit that he had to say. I um, also like the moment where, you know, he does, uh, he does do a lot of crazy changes and everything. Like, yes, even when he gets upset, like a crazy monster comes out of his head. <laughs> just, when, <laughs> just when he got caught by Snick. And he was ready to uh, dump him inside the hole, same way that he was going to dump uh, all the other uh, the kids down there. Yeah, even the Brian. <laughs> yeah, or um, any other crazy shit that, or any other ones too. Uh, and yes, the funny moments when the, when Ronnie Coleman actually eats the, some lunch and and drinks the, the apple juice which is filled with piss and he spits it straight into the principal's clothes and he says there's piss in my apple juice <laughs> yeah um and um but anyway uh but Maurice definitely has a great personality that he that it was just fun so it's sort of like Beetlejuice in a way uh some very uh, amazing special effects that they use um Again, this is from the 80s, so at least you know what special effects was like at the time, so it's not, no CGI. Uh, inside the, the monster room, I mean, you get to see a lot of, uh, you see that uh, the star that's like spinning around with many colors, fine. How about that? looks really impressive. I mean, you do see a lot of uh, makeup effects of all the monsters, you know, the way they change and everything. I mean, this was done practically, too, so I love the practical effects that they had. Uh, there's even a disturbing scene where Snick actually takes out the kid's head and about to, uh, you know, take out his eye and everything. Then he actually throws it into the basket. Yeah, <laughs> very fucked up. Um, uh, yeah, there's even one disturbing scene, too, where, <laughs> where Maurice actually pulls down Brian's pants and, you know, because there's, like, a cute chick... It's a monster that says, nice ass. <laughs> and all that. Um, a lot of crazy shit goes around with all these monsters. Saying, like, all weird looking, creepy looking, all that. Um, but it is a funny comedy, and I love the soundtrack too. I mean, they actually have songs that were done by uh, uh, Billy Hughes, uh, joining in with other bands here, even Talking Heads, with the song Road to Nowhere. I love that song. That was actually at the end of the, the movie. So it was really cool. Because uh, I know that song came out in the mid-80s. So I, I knew that's where the song came from. And I think Billy Hughes or any other artists, they sound a little bit like Fre Freddie Mercury there. But I know it's not Freddie Mercury. Fortunately, the soundtrack was never released. They were going to, but it was due to bank. Uh, Bestron's uh, bankruptcy problems. So it's a shame. They did have a book, though, by the way, which the book actually did have the Bestron Pictures logo, but no United Artists. Um, unfortunately, the film had a limited release, um, only released at 179 movie theaters, uh, including here. Um, they did play it here in, in my area, uh, but it didn't do very well at the box office. I mean, seeing that it only had its uh, small budget of seven million, only made like um, nearly uh, eight hundred thousand dollars. So that's a shame. But it did the best it could.
Um, but still, it, it actually made profit on home video, and people still remember it. It was on TV a lot, so so people at least got a chance to see it for those who haven't had a chance to see it in theaters. So, yeah. But either way, it's fun. It's definitely worth watching on Halloween nights or any other. So, so if you love, um, but plus, I mean, you have Fred Savage, you know, having fun. And with his brother Ben Savage, and you get to see Daniel Stern and then all the rest of the actors. I hope this movie gets a Blu ray release. Uh, maybe Kino Lober might take a chance out of it, or Olive Films, or possibly Shell Factory, because. Already they announced that uh, another Fred Savage film the same year called The Wizard is coming out. I mean, since Universal put that out uh, last year, that's bare bones. So that we're now going to get one with special features. I mean, how cool is that? I also wonder if maybe Fred Savage might be interested in doing some interviews. Um, but otherwise, I think it's going to be one of the supporting cast or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It would be nice too, because I'd love to see Fred Savage talk about this film. Again, that's Little Monsters, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.